This video or learning objective focuses on multi-product break-even analysis. The same basic equations are used, however the contribution margin must be weighted by the sales mix. The sales mix is the relative percentage in which a company sells its multiple products. In the previous video, we discussed the break-even point in units. This video is going to focus on the break-even point in dollars. In either instance, that denominator, again, it's not the unit contribution margin and the contribution margin ratio, but rather it's the weighted average. Um, I forgot to mention this in the previous video, but there is a handout that summarizes this information. Um, I posted it to Blackboard. Before we talk about break-even point in dollars, I'd like to quickly review the calculations for break-even point in units. Break-even sales in units is determined by using the weighted average unit contribution margin of all the products for a company with a small number of products. The sales mix is the number of units sold of a given product relative to the total units sold. Again, it's really important when we're calculating sales mix, we're using the number of units sold. For example, if a company sells 8,000 units of product A and 2,000 units of product B, the sales mix is 80% for product A and 20% for product B. All right, so when we are determining break-even sales in units, the first step is to determine the sales mix. And again, as I just stated, we want to use the number of units sold. The next step is we're going to calculate the weighted average unit contribution margin. And I want you to think of this as the average of all the products, units, contribution margins, but we're going to weight that by the sales mix. So what you're going to do is you're going to take each product and you're going to multiply the contribution margin by the sales mix percentage and then simply add the results for each product. The next thing we're going to do is determine the break-even point in units. We're going to simply divide that weighted average unit contribution margin, again that's what we uh, established or calculated in step two, and simply divide that by our fixed cost. And then the last step is we have to determine the individual product sales needed to break even. So we're going to take that break even point in units, which we calculated in step three, and multiply by the sales mix, which we determined in step one, to determine how much of each product we need to sell to break even. The calculation of the break even point presented in the previous slide works well if a company has only a small number of products. Let's consider 3M, the maker of post-it notes, which has more than 30,000 products. In order to calculate the break-even point for 3M using a weighted average unit contribution margin, we would need to calculate 30,000 different unit contribution margins, and that's not realistic. For a company with many products, Break-even sales in dollars is calculated using the weighted average contribution margin ratio. We compute sales mix as a percentage of total sales dollars rather than units sold. And to calculate the weighted average contribution margin ratio, we multiply each division's contribution margin ratio by its sales mix percentage and then add these amounts. To illustrate, suppose that Kale Garden Supply Company has two divisions, indoor plants and outdoor plants. Each division has hundreds of different types of plants and plant care products. When we calculate the sales mix percentage, we're going to focus on the sales for each division and we're going to divide that by the total sales, in this case 1 million. Right, the sales mix percentage for indoor plant is 20%, and again, you're taking the sales of 200,000 and dividing that by total sales of a million. We're going to do a similar thing for the outdoor plant division. Again, the sales for that division is 800,000. We're going to divide that by the total sales of 1 million to arrive at 80%. Right? So the sales mix is 20% indoor plant division, 80% outdoor plant. We can also calculate the contribution margin ratio for each division, 
Again, if you take the contribution margin for the indoor plant division of 80,000 and divide that by the sales of 200,000, you get a contribution margin ratio of 40%. You can do a similar exercise for the outdoor plant and you will, you will arrive at a 30% contribution margin ratio. And you can also come up with the contribution margin ratio for the combined company, which is calculated by dividing the total contribution margin by total sales. It's really useful to know that the contribution margin ratio of 32% for the total company is a weighted average of the individual contribution margin ratios of the two divisions. So let's first take a look at the indoor plant division. We know that the contribution margin ratio was 40% and we know the sales mix was 20%. If we multiply those two numbers, we'll arrive at 8%. All right, let's do a similar calculations for the outdoor plant. The contribution margin ratio was 30% and the sales mix was 80%. Again, if we multiply 30 by 80%, we'll arrive at 24%. If we add 8 plus 24 by 24%, we'll get 32%. And that's the weighted average contribution margin ratio for this company. Right. The second step that we need to do is we need to calculate the break-even point in dollars. And we're simply going to take that weighted average contribution margin ratio of 32% and divide into the fixed cost, which are $300,000, to arrive at a break-even point in dollars of $937,500. The break-even point is based on a sales mix of 20% to 80%. So Kale must sell $187,500 from the indoor plant division. Again, that's found by taking the break-even sales of $937,500 and multiplying by the indoor plant division sale mix, sales mix of 20%. We'll do a similar exercise for the outdoor plant division. Again, taking that break-even sales of $937,500 and multiplying by the outdoor plant division sales mix of 80% to arrive at the sales that need to be generated from the outdoor plant division, which are $750,000. Right. When this company sells $187,500 or sales from the plant, indoor plant, and $750 from the outdoor plant division, they will break even. It's at this level of sales that the contribution margin and fixed cost will be equal. Let's review how to calculate break-even sales in dollars for multiple products. It's going to be fairly similar to our calculations for break-even sales in units, except there'll be some slight differences. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is determine the sales mix. It's really important that when you're determining the sales mix that you use total dollar sales and not units sold. All right, so we're going to use the sales information for divisions or product lines rather than for individual products. All right, the second thing we're going to do is we need to calculate the weighted average contribution margin ratio. I want you to think of this as the average of all the divisions or product lines contribution margin ratios weighted by the sales mix. So it's gonna be calculated by multiplying a division or product lines contribution margin ratio by its sales mix percentage, and then adding the results for each product, product line or division. All right, once we have that weighted average contribution margin ratio, we can then determine that break-even point in dollars. Again, we're going to take that weighted average contribution margin ratio and divide that into our fixed cost. All right, and then the last step is we need to determine the division or product line sales that are needed to break even. And what we're going to do there is simply multiply the break-even point in dollars, which was determined in step three, by the sales mix percentage for each division or product line, which was determined in step one. And that'll give us the amount of sales that we need, we need to generate for each division or product line in order to break even. The solutions to this exercise will be provided in the next video.